behind the challenges. My next question, and the next question that will also go to other panelists before we open it up, is the challenges are there. The challenges, uh, do you, do, you uh, do subsistence farming? Do you encourage people to be able to live off the land? Do you conserve the land? Um, uh, what is the balance? How do you maintain that balance in order to be able to conserve the environment at the same time as being able to look after people's livelihoods? I think that in addition to that, uh, having identified the challenges, it's always easy to do that. What is action? What is actionable? What can one do? Yes, of course, there's education. We've heard about that, starting schools and starting young and having people like these young kids here being able to understand. What else can one do at this particular point in time? The Parliament of Uganda enacted a law to establish the Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education Center. And it is doing a great job connecting children to nature being animal keepers for a day, a, a, a week, a month. So the parents here and those that are watching us have the privilege of using the holiday to take their children to connect with nature. And they are doing a great job, although the financing is small, that they would be doing it through the whole country, but they try to do sensitization, awareness, and they are working with schools around Entebbe and, and, and those that are beyond Entebbe. Actually, the Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education Center before COVID was taking animals to the cultural activities. Karamoja cultural activity, uh, the, the, the Mpango, because uh, LC is my minister for tourism in Toro Kingdom. So at the celebration of the coronations, animals would be taken so that people identify with their totems and then the culture is charged to loving and not hurting the animals which are their totems. And Uganda Cultural Kingdom activities would take these animals as well. And for me, that was uh, a, a right direction for us to make sensitizations, make people love their totems, uh, animals which are their totems. Secondly, we, we, need, we, we want to uh, appreciate that culture was doing a great job in maintaining heritage for posterity. But when we changed the land tenure system and we went into fragmentation, land fragmentation, so people now individualize the development and they don't care what the neighbor does, whether the neighbor should leave, and they are living in that kind of situation. If we had maintained communal land, if we had maintained cultural land and clan land, I think people there were, were, were accountable to each other in terms of their heritage. We could, uh, we could use our cultural institutions to go back to such settings. And so, um, of course, re reforestation and afforestation needs, uh, I think we need a, a, a business case because the Ministry of Finance only listens to figures. What is the cost? that we are going to take if we don't do anything about reforestation and afforestation. So that the Minister of Finance can know how much they spend in, 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 in mitigating and trying to compensate and sort issues when chimpanzees come to people's homes, pick their babies and go away with them. So the Minister of Finance must be told the cost of not doing so that they can know whether it is okay for them to spend in compensations or to mitigate now and, 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 and spend on forestation and, and reforestation. Of course, documenting experiences is very good because that is when we get learnings, that is when we can share, share knowledge on conservation in Uganda and also evaluate the impact and uh, having a mind about conservation. I would like to implore the Ministry of Tourism and Uganda Wildlife Authority to operationalize the Uganda Wildlife Authority Act that we passed in 2018. Because without operationalizing it with instrument and, 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 and regulations, then we just made a paperwork which will never be implemented. So can they fast track the operationalization of laws? And of course, um, we, we should take 
conservation and environmental management, not only as a cross-cutting issue, it should now get a certificate of non-compliance. If any of the sectors does not comply to conservation, they should not even be given a budget. Let us get it from the cross-cutting issues and make it a main issue where no budget is given unless, <laughs> unless they are conservation compliant. So that comes with a policy, and the policy makers are here with us, beginning with the Minister of Tourism. Let's get a policy on that, financial implications, on whether each sector cannot finance conservation. And of course, institutional partnerships are very good. Our partners, I thank you very much. Jane Goodall Institute, uh, UWEC, the Ministry of Tourism itself. We have WWF, AWF, WCS, all those have been partnering in this. But they, they are loners. They, they are scattered. We need a collaboration. We need the same message. We need to work together. We need to know the roadmap. What, what are we doing next? But because some of the interventions have been projectivized, they are not sustainable. Because everything is done as a project, and then when the project is over, everybody walks away, and then we, 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 are, we are looking around. Let us collaborate so that even if uh, a certain partner is working out, they leave their, their, their roadmap and their priorities to the partners remaining so that we continue and sustain, and sustain this drive. Well, I did ask the question, didn't I? I mean, thank you very much. <laughs> it's very comprehensive. Um, I, I, I think that the idea of, uh, of being able to, to to connect the dots.